Well, today, guys, we got three, maybe four-ish big stories. Two of them are really related to each other. We're going to be talking about the Nintendo Switch 2 because, oh boy, the floodgates have opened. And we have even more information than we had in this morning's video on the topic. Plus, notifications didn't really go out. So we got to revisit all that information anyways, but in a much smaller, quicker, more easily digestible way. And we're going to give you the nitty-gritty details on Nintendo's next platform. Also beyond all that, we have some updates on Summer Game Fest and E3, and we have a patent that might be very telling also for Nintendo Switch 2. Oh boy, what are we waiting for? Go ahead and hit that validation button. Subscribe to the channel, and you know what? ring a -ling that ding a -ling, you're notified of all future uploads. All right, guys, let's dive right into this because here we go. First up, we need to talk about Summer Game Fest and yes, E3. How the heck did E3 make it in the news today? We'll get to that in a moment. First, Jeff Keighley went ahead and announced that Summer Game Fest 2024 is coming back. Of course, that's it, no additional details. Now, last year they did do an in-person demo event We'll see if that happens again and if it gets expanded upon. Maybe Nintendo joins in. We have no idea, but that is something happening again next summer in LA. Now, E3 also put out a sort of double announcement today. One, they're going to attempt to come back in 2025. And also, they have basically fired Reed Pop. Uh, Reed Pop had a multi year contract to run E3. Reed Pop never got an E3 out the door. ESA wasn't happy about that. Goodbye, Reed Pop. ESA takes back over. I don't know what their plans are. I don't know if E3 can even come back. I think at this point, most of us have sort of conceded E3 is donezo, but the ESA hasn't given up on it. Literally don't know how they can get it back. Unless you can get Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo all back in the fold, I literally don't know how it could happen. They've already informed the LA Convention Center that they won't be using it next year, although they technically haven't said there won't be an E3 next year, even though they have said they're targeting 2025. Look, at this point, we could probably just give up on E3, but hey, they found one more way to find themselves into the headlines. Our next story actually just deals with Miyamoto and Charles Martinet. They put out that promised video essentially saying goodbye to Charles Martinet. At least that's what many of us thought it was going to be. In reality, it was just, hey, I'm in a new role. And then they go on to explain the role, which pretty much just matches exactly what Nintendo said. And Miyamoto and Charles Martinet basically said the same thing. He's going to travel the world. They're very thankful for each other. He's going to keep doing fan meetups. And yeah, that's what his role is and promoting Mario. So look, it's a really, really cute video. And it does, if anything else, it does show that there's probably not a ton of ill will between Nintendo and Charles Martinet over the change. Obviously, we know he wanted to voice these characters forever, but... Hey man, you know, Charles, you've been a service to this industry and it's really cool that we've actually gotten to put you in three different news episodes because that's how big of a deal you have been, man. You were the voice of a huge chunk of my life when it came to Mario and it's it's just, you know what? It's time for the next chapter, but I, I still want to say thank you for everything you've done. And next up, we're going to jump into a patent that was posted at the USPTO website from Nintendo quite recently. Essentially, what we learned from this patent as we're scrolling through here, there's a lot of jargon in it, but the general gist is that it looks like Nintendo has been looking into and patenting Hall Effect related joysticks. Now, again, Nintendo has no device today that uses Hall Effect joysticks officially, and these are their own versions separate from the ones we have seen from other companies. Now, will Nintendo actually manufacture their own joysticks? That I don't know, but the point is that they actually do have patents for Hall Effect joysticks that are quite new and published this year. This could suggest they are going to be switching over to Hall Effect joysticks either in the new controllers on Switch 2 or the new Pro Controller that Switch 2 will inevitably have. We'll have to wait and see, but it is a positive sign that Nintendo is recognizing it's time to move beyond the traditional control stick. Next up, we need to get into what has become a cavalcade of information on Nintendo Switch 2. This is basically the reason this video exists. We'll see how concise I can make this. There's a lot of stuff out there, but we're going to summarize this all up. First off, two reports came out this morning, both from Eurogamer and Video Game Chronicle, and Good Vibes Gaming as well has backed this up on YouTube. Essentially, this is the gist of what came out of those reports. At Gamescom, developers met with Nintendo behind closed doors 
and were shown the Nintendo Switch 2 and shown the capabilities of the system with two demos. One of those demos being a 4K Breath of the Wild high frame rate ray traced gorgeous looking demo which may or may not indicate that they're going to bring breath of the wild back in some way on the new platform we don't know it's just a demo the other demo that they showed off was actually that matrix unreal engine 5 demo that they actually showed off for playstation 5 and xbox series x now this demo does run on things like steam deck and theoretically could run on switch it would obviously just look really bad i think the steam deck version runs at like 560p so it doesn't really look that good but here's the thing it's not that it was running the unreal engine 5 demo proving that unreal engine 5 is compatible with the next system it's what the developers had to say about it they say that this was not only 4k this was not only not only using full ray tracing and they said nintendo seemed to emphasize like hey look at the settings this is full ray tracing we're using right now also, also, it looks like the PlayStation 5 version. This is now the second time in as many weeks that we have heard something looks like the PlayStation 5 version on this system. And now this is coming from multiple developers at a private showcase by Nintendo. That is absolutely incredible. Now, I want to clarify. No, the Nintendo Switch 2 is not as powerful as a PlayStation 5. It might not be even on paper as powerful as an Xbox Series S, but they are using a technology called Deep Learning Super Sampling, or more commonly just referred to as DLSS. We can go into all the technical mumbo jumbo behind it, but it looks like they're using version 3.1, at least that's according to Necro Felipe, who said from Nintendo Universal that he said, hey, this is what I heard they're using version 3.1 in those demos, which does, you know, is a more modern version of the DLSS. And yeah, it's super sampling and up resing and higher frame rates, and it does a really good job, even better than what FSR can do. So that seems to be the magic. It's using a modern architecture with DLSS 3.1. But here's the thing, we actually get a little bit of spec details as well, because Necro Felipe put out there that the consumer version, so what's gonna be delivered to our hands to play, contains 12 gigabytes of RAM, and that means the dev kits have about 16 gigabytes of RAM. That is a lot. A lot of people thought we might only get eight, and we were a little worried about that. 12 is great. There's actually 16 gigabytes of GDDR6, GDDR6, yeah, in the PlayStation 5, so this having 12 is absolutely incredible. We obviously don't know the rest of the specs, but let's say we have the Hall Effect Six, we have the eight inch screen, it's LCD. Uh, and you know what, we got the, the ARM 78C or whatever cores are using eight of those. Those are some spec specs out there. Supposedly, maybe this thing can run in dot mode at 3.4 teraflops with modern architecture. DLSSS kicks the thing up, makes it look like PlayStation 5 games. It sounds like developers are highly, highly impressed with what this system is. And that's really the big takeaway. It's not that it's a portable PlayStation 5. It's that it's using technology a PlayStation 5 can't use to make up the difference to that platform. And that is just incredible. And all I can say is, I can't wait to see what Nintendo does with this, because it's going to be awesome. That being said, folks, that's it. I tried to keep it short. That's all we got for you today. Thank you so much for joining us for Prime News, and I'll catch you in the next video.